my first guest tonight, very interesting guest this is because, you know, that's what we do on Off the Fence. We give you interesting guests. She has a proven ability to conduct and analyze change management. Listen carefully to these words. Needs assessment. <laughs> change needs that consequently paved the way for effective change management plans. She is an organizational change management and business transformation practitioner with over 15 years of making ish happen. And guess what, guys? <laughs> She's in our talk of town right now. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to Off the Fence with Finch. I had to give y'all my announcement voice. Janet Lewis. Ta-da. And then she appears. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Hello, everyone. everyone. Hello, Mr. Finch. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I am fantastic. You, you got a well-lit background over there. What, what, what are you promoting over there? Uh, I'm unleashing my inner power, so I started my in-house studio. You unleash your inner power. <laughs> that is the subtitle of my book, Lost and Found, How to Find Yourself, Take Charge of Your Life, and Unleash Your Inner Power. Okay, okay. So, 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 so you are rolling around in your inner power right now. That's why you feel so good, all warm and tingly, huh? Exactly. And this show right now where i'm at right now is part of unleashing my inner power okay so let, let's jump right into it what is your your inner power my inner power is the ability to do what i've always wanted to do the things that i dream about at night things that i doodle the things that i write down from jesus was a baby from young ages it's about getting those things out of the mind out of the spiritual into the physical you write down stuff like jesus is a baby <laughs> well since jesus was a baby that's that's kind of my mark my point that i use to get things out is to say hey you've been doing this for so long it's time for you to get it out of the spirit and into the physical okay okay and how would one move something from the spirit to the physical? Most people may not even understand what that is or even how to do it. Is that something everybody can do? Is that just something you and a select few can do? It's something that everybody can do. And it comes from the, the mindset or the thought that everything that happens in the physical first happened in the spirit. For example, you're here doing your show you had to think about it first and maybe mm -hmm. put it on paper. And then you went out and got the place, got the equipment, got the guests to make it happen. So everything that happens first happened in the spirit before you can actually see it. So I can manifest yeah. stuff in the spirit and then it happens in the natural. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. It first has to take place in the, in the spirit. And, and how would one do that? It's by a lot of things. So uh, confessing, visualization, um repeating um so i have these little mantras that i repeat i go on walks every day for example and i say them out to the universe and i speak the things that i want to want to to come to pass so i take it out of my thought which is the spiritual and bring it into the physical which is life okay so so were you lost and then you got found is, oh is that absolutely lost and i think i'm still founding <laughs> you're so, still finding are you still finding your, your are you still are you saying you're still finding your way or along your journey but you're not completely out of the woods of being found like you're still you're still uh what's the word uh, you're still being held hostage right in some sense but i've made a great breakthrough by first identifying that i was lost so that's the first uh, sign of me being found is identifying that I'm being lost. And as I'm finding myself, I use the word that I'm still, you know, finding myself because as I'm finding myself, I'm finding more things that I didn't even know that I had lost or things that I didn't even know that I had hidden or, or wanted. All right. So that's good. Let's, I'm glad you mentioned that. So what are some of the things you've lost outside of yourself? Uh, so one of the things that I've lost that I recently found um, was my desire to be a lawyer. 
Uh, when I was young growing up, I've always wanted to be a lawyer. And for some reason, it just went way in the back of my mind, way somewhere in Never Never Land. And as I was writing the book, and once I finished writing the book, I was on one of my walk one day and I literally heard a voice said, be a lawyer, you're a lawyer. And this happened last year around August, September-ish. And January of this year, I started the process of becoming a lawyer. So I went back to school starting this January. All right. So let me get this straight. A lot of uh, the things that you found, your desire, it was sitting over at Michael Jackson's old place in Neverland. <laughs> Somebody took it. I don't know if it got lost purposely or by accident, but basically it was no longer with me. And so it had to come back to me, and that's how I found it. Now, did you go in the Neverland with the feds, or did you go by yourself? How did you get your uh, stuff back? I went by myself. I snuck in. While while the feds were sleeping, I snuck in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you went to Neverland, got your desire back, and then a voice in the nightfall said, be a lawyer. Just like that, right? Be a lawyer. Be the lawyer that you already are. Okay. Right, be a lawyer that you already are, and so immediately when I came back from my walk, I wrote down on my sticky, I am a lawyer, and I just put it up on my vision board. And that was in, I think, August or September. And like I said, January, I started the process, I went back to the university uh, to start the process of becoming a lawyer. So, so now, now, when, when let's say when we hear this voice, how do we identify what voice this is, who's talking, where is it coming from? How did you identify that? You make it seem like I'm hearing voices. But you, but you said weird. that. I didn't say that. You said you heard a voice on your walk home. It said, be a lawyer. Just like that. Well, that is a very good question. I believe that our inner self does sometimes speak to us. And sometimes there are different voices. Voices. There are the voices that comes to encourage you. And then there are the voices that comes to discourage you. How you know what the difference is, is the direction by which the voice is telling you to go. Telling me to go back to school is not a bad thing, but if the voice said go rob a bank, then you know that's the wrong voice and you shouldn't listen to that voice. Well, wait a minute now. The voice could tell you to go back to school and then you, you got a lot of student loans and then the people taking your tax money. That couldn't be the right voice, now could it? <laughs> well, the voice did not tell me to get a student loan, so that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So so your desire, I, and I think that's huge when you think about that, because so many of us have lost a desire to do things that we aspired to do at one point in our lives. Uh, one thing that we said we was going to do or things that we as, have wanted to do even now, but something causes us to lose that desire. What caused you to lose that desire to do those things? Uh, I think a lot of things. So in the beginning of my book, I talked about what what, what can make one become lost. Um, in my case, I summed it up to a few things. The main thing being my migration from Jamaica uh, to Canada. So I know you haven't asked me that background question yet, but if I may, I can jump right into it. You from Jamaica? I was born and raised in Jamaica. I knew it was something Canada. I liked about you. I it knew it was something. All the right. best country on the planet. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and so when I migrated to Canada, I was 15 years old. And mm. at the time, I did not realize. But throughout the process of writing the book, I realized that that's when I became lost. Lost in the sense that I came from Jamaica. I came with, you know, desires and aspirations. But I'm a young 15-year-old girl who landed in this new country, new weather, new people, new school system, new everything. So it's almost mm. like whatever I had was just parked at the side and I had to start a whole new life. So the desires that I had became, I, I gathered new desires or took on a new journey because of the environment uh, that I was placed in. Okay. And, and, and so because of this transition, a number of new things happening in your life at such a young age, you lost that desire from the, are you saying you lost that desire from the age of 15? I believe so. Uh, maybe not exactly 15, maybe it took maybe a few years, uh, two, three years, so maybe at 17, 18, by that time, my new path or my new journey was starting to become in full swing. So that desire or that, that brain that I moved to Canada with uh -huh. no longer existed because a new, a new concept of my brain took over. Okay. 
Now, now when I when I introduced you, I, I I used a lot of PhD words. You know, I flunked out of college, so those words are big to me. So you should so, think about going back. Maybe that's one of the things you can find. No, that ain't that ain't for me. <laughs> that's your story, not mine. <laughs> I've done pretty well without college. Um, but when you talk about change management, you know, because I took that. Let me tell you what I, how I took that. I know it probably centered around your profession in some regards, but I looked at it as how does change management play a role in your personal life? Because you help so many other people to do this, but who's helping you with the change management that you need with, within yourself? That's a very good question. And there is some, there is such thing as change management for the change management person. So I help myself uh, by applying the tools and the teachings that I give to to my clients. Okay, and what are some what are some of these tools that you give other people? What like, and where did you get these tools from? Like, did, were they sell them at Home Depot? Where did you get these tools? <laughs> so, uh, so I've been doing change management for over fifteen years, and I am a certified change management specialist. So I did go to school to get certification in change management. So I have both the certification and the hands-on experience. And some of the t- the tools that I use start with uh, self discovery or assessment, which is something that can be used both in the professional field as well as in the personal field. Because I believe that in order to solve any problem or get anything done, there has to be some sort of an analysis or a discovery or an assessment before you can actually get to a solution. Oh, that's good. That's Mm -hmm. good. So self-assessment makes you, now does self-assessment make you self-aware? It should. That is the that is the ultimate goal of the self assessment. is It's to allow you to be aware of what the challenges are, where the problems are, where the focus should be, what mm-hmm. should you hold on to, what should you let go of, and so forth. That's good, Janet. That's really good. So, Thank what's you. Some, I think so too. What are some <laughs> of the things that you uh, become self aware of yourself that you've had to let go of in order for you to change? Um. So I did talk about this in my book a bit. I became aware of the fact that I was a little bit too quick to say yes. And as a result of that, I put myself in positions to be used or position to be taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a saying, I'm not sure where the original came from, but there's a reggae song that says, don't take my kindness for weakness. And so sometimes some people do take that kindness for weakness because of the fact that when they ask for a request, I would say yes with no questions asked or without even remembering that, hey, I may have said yes to this person four or five times ago and I never heard from them again. So I had to become aware of uh, not doing that and not putting myself in a position to be to be hurt or used or manipulated. Okay. Now that note you just used, could you say that again? Don't take my comments from me. <laughs> you say it wrong, but you get the words. <laughs> that one right there. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so uh, when when you're looking at becoming self aware, doing an assessment for those who might have a number of things lost, like you know, in the last year, we've people have lost loved ones, they lost employment, they lost a sense of stability and income. What are some of the things that you would 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 say to those people that may be listening or watching uh, to assist them in getting off the fence of where they are? Because I said this early last year when we was in the thick of things. People have lost hope. And although we've gotten a stimulus or three, <laughs> that hasn't necessarily changed. Because if, if we're being honest, although many are grateful for the stimulus. It really isn't helping people who've lost uh, a certain percentage of wages because in some cases they're so far behind on, on things that it's just helping for a, 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 a small amount of things, although it's helping. So what would you say to those people right now when, when you're looking at things that have been lost to help them find their way and, and clear this fence that they're on? Mm-hmm. I think the problem is most people don't know who they are they're not sure what they want and therefore it prevents them from knowing how to go for what is it that they want. So in the case of the pandemic, like even I myself had to 
reassess uh, my situation and my plans. And one of the things that allowed me to do that is to look within myself to see who am I? What am I about? Right? Because there are some people that were in a job that they lost as a result of COVID. True. But maybe they just had that job because they were just paying a bill. They just took the job because they were just living in that moment or just paying that bill. But is that what they really wanted to do? Mm -hmm. So this is now an opportunity to go within yourself and say, is this what I really want to want to do? Is this is this who I am? What else can I do to replace uh, that income or that stability that I had uh, pre-COVID? What can I do to pivot to to the next stage of, of, of where I'm supposed to be? OK. And, and I mean, and, and I think that's that's broad in a sense, because when you think about knowing who you are, who are we really? But more importantly, people don't know how to discover that. So what specifically would you what? And I don't know if this is a if it's a method, if like how do you, a person go about discovering who they are? Like a lot of us know we know what we like. We damn sure know what we don't like. But we can't tell you m m uh, many things about ourselves because nobody's ever taught us how to discover who we authentically are, which is why we oftentimes copycat everybody else. Mm -hmm. It starts with spending time with yourself. And when you make that decision to find out who you are and spending time with yourself, there's there's one thing that I had to uh, tell myself up front and agree up front is that I am going to be as honest with myself as possible. And when I discover the things that I'm discovering through this spending time with myself, I have to find a way to embrace it. Um, I am of the mindset that problems are solved through questions and answers. Problems are solved through conversations. And it is possible for you to have a conversation with yourself. It is possible for you to ask yourself a question, right? Because when you ask yourself that question, you, you will get that answer. So it starts with spending that time with yourself and actually going deep. When I talk about me going for, for walks, that's my me time. And when I go for the walk, I'm very conscious of my walk because I will ask questions and question certain things. Um, for example, in the case that I gave you where I had to be aware of the fact that I was saying yes too much, I had to go for a process of analysis to say and, and literally count down the number of times people would come knock at my door and how much I said yes and what happened when those people got what they wanted and they left. So it's spending that time with yourself, questioning some of the things that you've done uh, questioning why you do the things that you do, because sometimes we do things not because of what we want to do, but because of what either our parents or society or family members or other people may have projected on us. True. Mm -hmm. True. Now you got a, you got a big little ring on. What does that mean? That, is, um, that where you, is that where you hold all your superpowers? Uh, this is my... <laughs> This is my reminder uh, to remind myself that I'm not where I need to be from a, a, a marital perspective. <laughs> and I uh, because I watched a few of your shows and I noticed that you asked a few of the ladies about their marital status. I'm not sure if it's your thing, but uh, I wore the ring just in case you decide to ask me. <laughs> <laughs> You wore the ring just in case I decided to ask you. That is funny. <laughs> it's the absolute truth. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, so number one is know who you are. Know who you are. Number right. two. Who are you? Uh, am I who people say I am? Um, am I, like when I introduce myself, I don't introduce myself as a change management consultant because that's not who I am. That's just my title. I'm not an author. That's just the title. So who are you? And are wow. you are you seeing yourself from someone else's perspective? Are you seeing yourself in the eyes of the media or in the eyes of someone else? Or are you seeing yourself from who you know you are based on that assessment that you've done on yourself, based on that discovery that you found out about yourself through the questions that you ask yourself? Got you. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And number two is? Knowing what you want. Right? A lot of people don't know what they want. I'm guilty of that sometimes because sometimes I'm going to be honest, I'm not, I don't know what I want all the times in all areas. Right? And mm -hmm. I think one of the reasons is because there's so many options. Like there are so many options. Like the, the world is just full of 
so many choices and options that sometimes it can create confusion. Mm -hmm. I remember in my telemarketing days, way back in the 90s, I was selling long distance and I called up this lady and I, I was about to close the deal. And she said to me, oh, I'm so confused. I'm just gonna stick with the company I'm with. There's just too many options I can't choose. <laughs> and that always reminds me of where we are sometimes in our life is that we don't know what we want because there's so many options. And we don't know what we want because we may have chosen something or may want something, not because of what we want, because what someone else wants for us. Absolutely. Now, now you said to know what you want, and then you said sometimes you don't know what you want. And I think I know people are going to say, well, how can she be telling us what to do? And she don't know. It's not necessary about that. I think oftentimes we don't look at the fact that when we teach others something that we also struggle with those things ourselves. But the advice we're giving is sound. And if we apply the same advice for ourselves, it worked for us as well. Right. Exactly. And that's why I said in the beginning that I'm still founding myself because I found pieces of myself, but it's still a journey. And that's a very good point to say is that finding yourself is not about that. OK, all right. I found myself. I'm good now. I can just go back to sleep. It's, it's a journey. And the moment you realize that there's something missing within you and you need to get back to center, then that's the first success of you finding yourself. Right. Right. That's true. All right. And the final uh, recipe is. What? Removing mental clutter. Oh, removing mental clutter. How does one go about removing all these voices <laughs> that are coming in their head? How, how do they do that? So they all tie together, right? Knowing who you are, knowing what you want, and removing the mental clutter, they all tie together because to help remove the mental clutter is once you know who you are or you're on the understanding path of knowing who you are, when the voices come or when the distraction comes, you will be able to put them aside, right? You will be able to compartmentalize, com uh, compartmentalize them. And I, I totally said that word wrong, but you get what I mean. You compartmentalize, put them in yes, yes. Thank you very much. You'll be able to put them where they belong. You'll be able to start focusing and putting your mind and fixing your, your, your eyes on the prizes regard, with regards to where you want to be. Mm -hmm. For example, if you know that you have a plan that you're working on, you have some sort of a project that you're working on, and you know that you have a girlfriend or a boyfriend who likes to talk and likes to, you know, take it on a path that you don't like to go down, then you need to set boundaries within your mind to say that I am not going to be spending X amount of time with this person, or I'm not going to listen to this person because I have to focus on what is it that I'm that I'm doing. Okay. And, and I think that's that's good because mental clutter is what keeps us stagnant. It's what keeps us stuck uh, and it's what keeps us on the fence. So if we want to get off the fence, we have to know who we are. We have to know what we want and we have to remove mental clutter. And the way we do that is by doing a host of things that allow our minds to venture away from the problems and garner some solutions i myself have to do that often you know i let me tell you so here's what i do to remove mental clutter i go for a walk i ride my bike i go take pictures uh sometimes i just go sit at, on the cliff or over the mountains i live in los Angeles, so we have lots of mountains um sometimes i go to the beach and just sit out there it, it helps me remove mental clutter and it helps me come up with solutions i always give this story about my uh my cousin at the time she was two years old and she saw a toilet bowl had a lot of blue stuff in it it's spinning when you flush it and she says i want to stop that from happening so she starts stuffing a whole bunch of toilet paper into the into the toilet and it did the opposite because she overloaded it with stuff without any place for it to disseminate the stuff that was being brought into it that's how our minds are and it overflowed so she she didn't know how she overloaded versus overhauling overhauling we move around ideas and things what happened what helps me janet is when my mind is cluttered especially on things let's say if i'm looking at what's coming what's going out what's coming in host the thing i start with the things that i have control over the things that i actually have the power to change myself without any other assistance from anybody else and that's how i start prioritizing what I need to do first, second, third, fourth, and so forth. So 
I I get it. I really, really get it. So tell people really quick about your book, Lost and Found. Uh, is it out yet or is it coming out? So my book is out. It was published last April in the middle of COVID. Okay. Um, so it's hey, out. Wait, it's, you you got to stop moving it because we couldn't see it. when You, you got to hold it up. Yeah. It's, All right. it's on Amazon and it's called Lost and Found, How to Find Yourself, Take Charge of Your Life, and Unleash Your Inner Power. And the book really is, it talks about some of the experiences that I went through while I was lost, some of the things that I identified as to what uh, made me lost. And there are things that not just I go through, like regular, normal people go through that. So that's why I believe that people can relate to that. Mm -hmm. And going back to that mental uh, cluttering, like decluttering your mind from you know the mental clutter, one of the things that prevent us from doing that is not spending that time with herself and not being mindful of the things that we're thinking of. Um, one of my favorite uh, persons from my Christian days was Joyce Meyer. And she always said, mind your stinking thinking. So in, in other words, think about what you're thinking about. Right. And, mm. and like you said earlier, what are some of the things that I can actually control right now? What are the things that are within my control? What can I change and what can I not change? So the book shares some of the experiences that I've gone through. I think the regular day-to-day -day people like myself can relate to some of the experiences and also relate to some of the examples and some of the advice that I've given in the book. All right. All right, Janet. So if people want to connect with you online, how can they do so? You can connect with me on LinkedIn. So I'm Janet Lois on LinkedIn. Uh, I also have Lost and Found page on LinkedIn and my company, Dunamis Organizational Change Management, Inc., and I am also on Facebook as Janet Queen Esther Lewis. Okay. No Instagram, no Twitter. Uh, Janet Queen Esther on Instagram. All right. Cool. All right, Janet. Well, listen, it's been a pleasure sitting down and uh, talking with you today. Thank you so much for coming on the fence. And thank you so much for helping our viewers clear the fence. Yo, 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 yo. You're in the mix. The world's finest, man. DJ. Just I have the radio on the telly. You're in the mix, Lord. Oh, God.